on Nightline. Fat attack, the shocking new facts about America's obesity crisis. We know there's a problem, so why can't we stop packing on the pound? Nightline explains. This is Nightline, June 29th, 2010. Good evening, I'm Cynthia McFadden. We begin with two studies out today that draw the same disturbing conclusion. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. One study found that obesity rates for adults actually rose in 28 states this year. Only the District of Columbia showed a decline. So why is it that Americans keep getting fatter in spite of government efforts ranging from calorie posting to new school lunch programs? We asked Nightline's John Donvan to sift through all the reporting we've done on the problem over the past year to try to find the real villain behind the obesity epidemic. Kristen and Colin Robinson are a mother and son Nightline followed last year through a several thousand dollar program. A two week long weight loss camp which basically retaught them how to move and how to eat. Today's lunch list for me was veggie burger, baked beans, and go four ounces of gold leek soup. Americans spend a lot of money trying to lose weight and a lot of time talking about it. We're spending $150 billion a year treating obesity-related uh, illnesses, so we know this is a problem and there's a lot at stake. But not even her exhortations seem to be getting through because this new study published today in the Journal of Adolescent Youth looked at more than 6,000 middle school children across the nation and found that nearly 7% are not obese, but severely obese in the 99th percentile for weight, which means the problem is worse than believed. The second study by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and Trust for America's Health, both public health advocacy groups, not only found obesity rates up in 28 states, but also that more than a quarter of the population is obese in two-thirds of the states. But why, if we know this is going on, do we keep putting on weight? In a series of our own Nightline reports on different aspects of the problem, we heard theories, theories about why we're gaining and theories on how we can lose. First, theories about what's in it, what's in the food we eat. There is the single ingredient theory, that it's fructose. Fructose is the cause of the current epidemic. Robert Lustig at the University of California in San Francisco argues that the introduction in the 1970s of a low-cost sweetener called high fructose corn syrup lowered the cost of fructose in general so that now it's showing up everywhere, as he demonstrated for me, in quantities you don't really expect. Everyone seems to think yogurt is good for you yeah. and you, yogurt is healthy, but this has 27 grams of sugar wow. for this yogurt. So, wow. is it worth it? This has oh, this 27 is, grams of sugar, too, yeah. per serving. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. The worst part being, he thinks that fructose messes with our brains, making us ever more hungry. So your brain thinks you're hungry, because if your brain can't get the leptin signal, that's starvation. Feels it's, like starvation. Feels like starvation. He has his opponents, however. Consumers should know that fructose is a sugar, and a sugar is a sugar whether it comes from cane or corn or beet, and that Mother Nature gave us fructose in all the fruits and vegetables that we eat, but also in combination with another simple sugar, glucose. That has high fructose corn syrup in it. And? Yeah, you know what they say about it? Like what? This is an ad created by Audrey Erickson's group, the Corn Refiners Association. And in a funny way, they agree with Dr. Lustig, who says there is no difference between high fructose corn syrup and sugar. But Lustig says the level of obesity in America began to climb around the very time that the food industry started using lots of high fructose corn syrup. Because he says it's just so cheap and so readily available and therefore so everywhere. Okay, so if it's not just one ingredient that's the problem, maybe it's that there are all kinds of ingredients that just don't belong in the food we eat. That's what Michael Pollan thinks. I come up with some rules to help you distinguish the food from the edible food-like uh, products. One is, don't eat anything that your great-grandmother wouldn't recognize as food. You know, if she picked up a box of Gogurt portable yogurt tubes, would she recognize this? <laughs> I don't think she would. Pollan walked me around an organic farm, arguing that we just have to get away from packaged foods because humans are not designed to eat food that way. This is not food, by my definition. It's not food? No. If you look at processed food, the three buttons that are consistently pushed by the food scientists are sweet, fat, and salt. Our bodies uh, have not, are not well adapted to the food environment we're in. There's a, there's a disconnect now between what we evolved to like 
and what's now available to us. Way whole grain guaranteed. I mean, Quaker they produces oats, right? Then there is another category, how they sell it. The food we eat, New York Times food writer Mark Bittman took issue with the green check mark, a symbol introduced by several food makers last year to indicate that these items were smart choices for people who wanted to start eating better. Fruit Loops, of course, has no fruit in it, just to, just to set the record straight. I mean, it has more sugar per serving than many cookies. When sugar is 40% by weight of the product, what is the product? The product is dessert. It's not breakfast cereal, it's dessert. But there's actually added vitamin A and vitamin C and fiber. But you can put vitamins and minerals in, in garbage, and it'll meet the nutritional requirements as long as the garbage is low in fat, basically. Again, there was another point of view we believe the Smart Choices logo can move people, I'll call it up the ladder, away from high fat foods, um, high foods with high sugar content, foods with high cholesterol in them. Um, I think we can move people by gradually saying, you know, this is a smarter choice than you've been, you've been taking before. But it was not long after this broadcast that the green checkmark program was dropped. Then there's a whole set of theories built on how we eat it which several of our reports found is mostly without thinking. You hungry? Yeah. Like the family in Republic, Missouri, who volunteered to let us watch them eat for a day, where the discovery they made upon being watched was they didn't have any idea how many calories they were taking in. I could drink a two liter a day. So two liters a day of Mountain Dew is how many calories do you know? No idea. I never had to think about it. And the family in West Virginia, where there are 11 brothers and sisters and everyone has diabetes and they know the smart way to eat, they just don't seem willing to stick to it. Which brings us finally to all the reports we've done on what we should be doing about this. We went to a school in Wyoming where they not only started limiting portion sizes and pushing fruits and vegetables, they also began to put the kids' body mass index on their report cards. We visited Albert Lee, Minnesota, that was trying out several ideas proposed by Dan Butner, who has studied how healthier communities around the world do it. The local restaurant changed its menu. The kids started going to school this way, the walking school bus, they call it, instead of the real one. Here's your breakfasts. We profiled British chef Jamie Oliver and his TV series devoted to getting Huntington, West Virginia, to lose weight. I need you to know that this is going to kill your children's early. Yeah, we're talking about 10, 13, 14 years off their life. And back to that family in Republic. So let's see how many three quarters cup servings are in this bowl. We got them in touch with a nutritionist who taught them a lot they didn't know before about portion control. Oh no. <laughs> Results? Well, okay. we do know this, that in Republic at least, the mom has lost 18 pounds and her husband 36, which shows it can be done, but you have to try. And maybe there just isn't enough of that going on. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Washington. Mm, one thing's for certain, it's not easy to lose it once you gain it.